sharing my screen. Make sure I get the right screen here. All right, so this is my Teachable uh, homepage where I have my courses here. Um, and the one that I'm going to be uh, sort of focusing on today is Recolor Artwork. This is a very comprehensive class because Recolor Artwork is a pretty in-depth feature. You can just sort of dive in and start using it. Um, but there's a lot to it. And so uh, that's why I have this class as sort of a place to go for all that information. Let me go ahead and shut these windows down. All right, so here's my demonstration. And what I wanted to do is uh, go ahead and I'll just put this link here in case you haven't been to my Teachable website, but there it is. All right, so here we are in uh, Illustrator, and this is what I'm going to demonstrate to begin with is just sort of a really basic look at recolor artwork. So what I have here is an illustration, sort of typical, something that you would need, that you would be doing as an illustrator or a graphic designer, a spot illustration, and also some type there. And, you know, one of the things about Illustrator um, is that we have, you know, every object has a stroke and a fill potentially, but those are two settings that you have to make for every single object. So here we have these stems in the plant that are just a stroke with no fill. Um, and then here in the planter, we have a, a solid area of that same color that is a fill, but with no stroke. And then down here we have type that's the same color. So one way to deal with this in Illustrator, like to say, you know, I really want to just change that light blue. That's not the color I want there. But because it's assigned to objects that have different appearances, so might be the same color, but this is the appearance. It is a blue stroke with no fill. The appearance here is a blue, fill with no stroke, and then this is type, which is a fill. Um, you're not going to be able to use necessarily the magic wand to select all of that color or select same. For example, if we go into this menu here, select same, uh, then everything is sort of appearance based here. So um, these are not these do not have the same appearance, even though they have the same color. So one way of dealing with this is just to take all of this and make global swatches out of it. So if I select this artwork here and I go over into the swatches panel to this little um, menu here, I can use this command right here, add selected colors. So that's gonna just add right here, a global swatch for every single color in that selected art. And then, using global swatches, I can make global changes. So then I'm not sort of limited by the appearance, by whether it's on a fill or a stroke or that sort of thing. So I can go here, grab that light blue, double click it, check preview and make these sort of adjustments here, changing the color and that sort of thing. So I'm doing a global edit to that, which is great. So global swatches are one way to deal with this problem, but also recolor artwork is a really um, a great way to deal with this. And it's actually, you know, on the surface, really pretty easy to use. So let me go ahead and cancel this. And instead, so if I had not assigned global swatches to all of this art and I wanted to come in here and change it, I would select all of it again, go to this little button at the very top here and click on it. And now what I'm seeing is a color circle on this color wheel for every color that's detected in the art. And I can see that blue right here. And this is a place where I can also change that blue. So if I unlock, because right now all of these colors are locked together in this arrangement. Um, if I unlink them by clicking on this button here, then I have that blue color and I can completely change it. So, but then there's a whole lot more that I can do here too. All right, so um, let's see, let me go ahead and undo that. So what I wanted to say 
too, is what, what we're looking at now is the new panel for recolor artwork. So recolor artwork has ex existed in Illustrator. Um, I don't, I can't even remember a time when it wasn't a part of Illustrator and people have always sort of seen it as this complex feature or not exactly sure how to use it because um, truthfully, the interface is kind of complicated. Once you understand it, it's not so much anymore, but I think what they wanted to do is simplify it so that more people would use it. And so now we have this panel, which is a lot more compact than the original panel, but we can still get to the original panel. So here's the new recolor artwork feature. And this was um, released in October of last year. So it's still really new and it has some really, really cool new features that I'm gonna show you. But if you ever wanna get back to the, to the advanced feature or what I would call the original feature, it's right here under advanced options. But one of the great things about the new feature is this little um, undo button here. So if I click this, I can go right back to where I started, or at least I can step back like you do with the undo command. So that's just great. It doesn't exist in the original feature, but at least we have it here. So let me just show you if we if we're working in recolor artwork and you want to go to the original feature, you just click on this button right here. And now we're in advanced options. Now we can see that same old interface that's always been there. It really hasn't changed. Um, I, I mean, maybe there's a this button is different, even though it does the same thing. So visually, maybe a little bit it's changed, but in general, it hasn't changed. We have the edit color wheel over here. So this looks a lot like what we just saw on the new feature. Um, and then we of course have the assign color bars. Um, and this part of, of recolor artwork is extremely useful and there's nothing in the new feature that replaces it. So I'm so glad that they did not sort of mess with this or take it away. That's what I was most worried about. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and click cancel. Um, because you can get from the new feature to the original feature, but you can't get from the original feature, that big panel we were just in back to the new panel. All right, so let's start again. So one place to recolor is to use this button on your top control bar. If you don't have the top control bar uh, open, you can get that from the window menu. You can also go to edit, edit colors and recolor artwork. So whatever you have selected is what you can uh, recolor. And then what Illustrator is, is doing now is it's detecting every single color in your artwork. So it doesn't matter if it's in a stroke, a fill type, a gradient, um, it doesn't matter. It just has grabbed all of those colors and it's placed them on the circle, the color wheel um, in these color stops here. The larger color stop has a function to it, um, several different functions, and I'll show you that. So once you've got your here in recolor artwork. Um, you know, one of the sort of quickest things you can do is just grab this large circle and this large circle controls everything at once. And you can just drag it around and just sort of change the whole color array here and all the different hues, but they stay in that same color harmony arrangement. So everything, uh, is still, you know, if you set up complementary colors, you would still have complementary colors just, just driving us around the wheel here. But in the new side, of course, we can step back so we can look, use the undo button and go back and see what changes that we made. Maybe we found a combination that we like. Now, when you're spinning these colors around the wheel, I recommend holding the shift key. And what that does is it allows you to sort of keep everything in its uh, you know, constrained, like what shift does in Illustrator. That way you're not kind of all over the place here, but you're, these are kind of locked in. And another thing is, is that this, this larger circle right here will simultaneously, you know, allow you to drag all the colors to the edge or all the colors to the center. And what's happening here is that when we're looking at the wheel right now, uh, we're seeing color, but we're also seeing the saturation level. So the saturation level on the outside of the wheel is, is at its most saturated and we get le less saturation as we move into the center of the wheel. So just holding 
maybe the shift key so I can keep these hues, keep everything in line there, but hold the shift key and I can move toward the center and get a uh, less saturation and then move to the outer edge and saturate everything. Let me go here. All right, so we can change that though. We have right now saturation and hue is on the wheel, but we have these two buttons right down here, which allow you to control that and change it. So saturation is this button, which is darker. All the buttons that are engaged in Illustrator turn dark like, like that, no matter what interface you're using. Um, and then if I click on this one, this is the brightness darkness wheel. So same thing. If I want to darken up all these colors, then I can just drag them to the center and I can hold the shift key to sort of keep them constrained like that. So now I'm darkening all the colors and lightening all the colors. So if I get to this sort of light, uh, lighter color arrangement here, um, this slider works with these two buttons. So the slider right now, the wheel is controlling the brightness and darkness. And so the slider is gonna be our way of changing the saturation on the wheel. So for the more I push this up, the more saturated the colors get, the more I push this down, the less saturated they get. And then let me go ahead and I'm gonna reset. So I'm gonna use this button up here that just sort of takes us right back to the beginning so I don't have to step through using undo. Um, and then let me go ahead and find this kind of harmony arrangement again. All right. So we started, you know, with everything locked and moving everything together. And we've talked about, you know, how you control what's going on color wise on the wheel or, or saturation and brightness wise. Um, then we have this lock here, this link. And if I click this, I'm unlinking the color, which means, well, we can see the that there's a little dotted line on every color here, but now I can completely change that, these colors. So if I, I wanna move this one over here, maybe I'll make this a lighter color here. I don't want the pot to be red anymore. I want it to be blue so I can drag it over here. And so you're uh, um, able to work with these colors individually. Let me go back to the saturation and, and brightness wheel. Another thing that you can do when you're working with individual colors like this, not locked in their harmony arrangement, is that you can right click on these color stops and you can, there's several options that you have here. So you can say select shade. So you get kind of a shade, which is a, a nice little ramp here that makes it sort of easy to dial in an a exact shade because it's kind of hard. Sometimes this color wheel isn't that big. Um, so you have a lot more selections that you can make here um, using select shade. You can also double click on this and get a color picker, just like you've used in many other places in Illustrator. So you can do that. Um, and I'm working in CMYK now. So this document is a CMYK document. So even though I started out with what looked like was gonna be a pretty bright saturated color because I'm working in CMYK, I'm gonna get the CMYK, you know, the, the color that's possible in CMYK. A lot of the time I work in RGB, but that just happens to be this file. Um, let's see, Kathleen says, how would you get more pastel or lighter versions of that group of colors? And just answered, okay, great. Yeah, so that's one way to do it. There are other ways as well. And I'll, I'll try to make sure I circle back to that because there's a, on the advanced options side, there's a great way of doing that. Krista says, so knowledgeable, already learned so much new stuff. Oh, that's great. I'm so glad. Yeah, I think <laughs> shift is one of my favorite things. And I think I only figured that out in the last year or two. So I can't even believe I've been doing it this long and I didn't use shift when I was working with the, the color wheel. Okay, taking a sip of water. All right, thanks Krista. Okay, so let me look at my notes here, make sure I'm, I'm hitting all the points that I wanted to make. Um, all right, so let's say I like this color group. This is kind of looking like I wanted it to look. Um, now let's, go ahead and save these swatches because the swatches can always come in handy. Even if I decide I'm not going to use this later, I'm just going to kind of tuck these swatches away. So 
here, right here is um, a save swatches button. And I click on this and I can choose to save all the colors or save prominent colors. And we'll talk about prominent colors in a second. That's referring to this big bar down here, but all colors, what do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, <coughs> excuse me, either seven or eight colors. I'm gonna save all and there they are. So no matter whether I go and come up with another, let me lock this and just come up with a whole different arrangement. I can always use these later. I can undo my way through it. So the new feature is a lot more forgiving and flexible. Um, all right. So we've got a little bit of that now prominent colors. Let me actually go try to see if I can find something that I like better prominent colors. And we'll look at this more in a minute, but this is another way of balancing out colors here. So you can say, oh, I really want more blue in this arrangement here. And you can just drag that slider there and it's not predictable, but Illustrator will, you know, lean everything towards green, towards blue, whatever you do when you use this slider. So this is also a new feature, prominent colors. And I like this too. And then of course you can go down here and save the prominent colors and let's see what we get. It looks like actually the same number of colors um, that were in the artwork. It all depends. Like if you had artwork with a ton of colors then the prominent colors will be a smaller group of colors. Another thing that you can do here is you can uh, change the color randomly. So I just call this the shuffle button. And this is coming in handy because a lot of the time you have, you know, maybe not so much with art like this, but in a pattern, for instance, when you, when things don't have to be specifically assigned, you know, uh, you want to sort of see a jumble of colors, uh, then this is, can be really amazing. So this is a really quick way that I work a lot and I'll show you that too 